Hello everybody, I'm Nicola O'Brien and I'm a lead educator at Grok Academy. This video is part of a series which explores teaching cybersecurity in the primary school years. Before we get underway, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the land where I'm recording from today, the Camaragal people. I'd like to recognise the First Nations people of Australia as this country's original teachers and holders of knowledge. This video refers to a range of classroom activities, both online and unplugged. I'll be providing links at the end of the video so that you can access all of the activities I'm discussing today. Finally, I'd like to thank Google for their funding under the CS Educator PD Grants Program in 2021. This funding has made it possible for us to record and share these videos with you so that you can access them whenever you need to um, and explore different ways to teach cybersecurity to primary school students. In this video, we're going to be talking about scams. In particular, we'll be talking about teaching students about how to avoid scams. And we'll be looking at red flags as we describe them. So students know what to look for and can hopefully ensure they don't fall for scams. So we're finding that scam avoidance is increasingly important since we know that students, even in primary school, have their own phones. And it doesn't matter who manages that phone for them. If you have a phone number, most likely you're going to be exposed to scams. It's just the nature of the modern world. So while students probably laugh when they get a text message from the tax office telling them about unpaid taxes, um, they may also be getting text messages about um, gaming accounts or streaming services or things more relevant to them. Again, uh, attempting to extract either personal information, uh, payment details and so forth. And it's key, the key to avoiding scams is to understand what to look out for and to know what to do when you receive a scam message. I guess the essence of what we want students to come away with is an understanding of what to look out for and to engage with some critical thinking when they receive messages on whatever device it might be, uh, so that they pause and think, rather than um, falling into the hands of the scammer and acting in an immediate reflexive way without having a think about really what's going on there. So I'll run through an unplugged activity and also an online activity and chat through how these might be useful for you. And these two activities, the unplugged and the online, mirror each other quite closely so that the activity is nicely connected in the classroom and you can pick and choose which bits you want to use. Our unplugged activity that we have available on the website is called Scam Detective. Um, we introduce students to six red flags that let them think critically about messages they might receive. Um, and these red flag messages are great for students, even primary school students to go home and discuss with their family and share with them very useful for all households to really think about what the red flags are when they receive messages, because we know that adults are very likely to fall for scams as well as children. So the red flags that we introduce students to are if you are put under pressure to answer quickly or act fast. That's one of the key techniques used by scammers is to try and shortcut critical thinking by putting you under time pressure, either in a positive or negative way. So one way of applying pressure is to offer you something too good to be true maybe for a limited time. So there's a free prize waiting for you, but you need to claim it in the next 15 minutes. Techniques like that are very commonly used. Uh, another red flag is what we call an unsolicited message. And obviously with younger primary students or even upper ones, you'll need to explain to them what unsolicited means. Um, it's a message that you didn't ask for. And one thing we like to emphasize when we talk about this that might mean it's from somebody you don't know. Um, in some cases, it could even be from somebody you do know, but maybe their account's been hacked, or maybe someone's pretending to be someone that you know. And again, if it's a message that seems out of context, or you haven't asked for it, that's an unsolicited message. Uh, another red flag to look for is emails from an untrusted source. So um, if it's not from something you were expecting or it seems strange or out of context or doesn't connect to anything you've been doing recently, that might indicate it's from an untrusted source. Dodgy design is an element that we will take a look at in this activity. Um, this might be 
simple, a layout. It could be sort of copied logos from familiar brands, but something's a little bit off. Um, it can be grammatical errors. Um, it can also include techniques like not referring to a user by name. So dear sir or madam, rather than the username. Um, things like this, which just indicate that that email from the bank or the streaming service or the post office isn't quite what it pretends to be. And finally, some sort of a strange request. So uh, particularly in the adult world, there are emails that say, hey, we've changed our bank account. Please pay us to a different account now. Or it could be a message from the post office saying, um, you know, we have a parcel for you, but you need to pay something for us to release it. Things like this that are just a little bit off. Uh, so we introduce the students to the red flags. And then in the offline activity, uh, it's a printable worksheet where we show um, screen grabs from our fake phone interface and we have the students circle or highlight where they can see red flags in play. So in the text message on the right hand side, um, it says, hey Twitch fan, our login site has changed. Um, Twitch is spelt incorrectly there. Um, it says you need to immediately re-enter your password. And so obviously that's a bit of time pressure there being made to make a decision quickly. Um, the reason we thought it was useful to present these in the fake phone interface is that it gives the students a transferable context so they can see what a message, a scan text message on a phone looks like on a printed artifact, which means that when they receive a message like this on their actual phone, it might ring a bell and think, hey, that seems a little bit off to me. So that's a fairly straightforward activity that would encourage students to have a look at. Um, we've had a bit of fun and designed a classroom poster, which you can download from our website and print off, or if you want it to look super glossy, you know, send it through to your local printing store or something like that, and they can do your big copy. Um, really nice to have in the classroom as a reminder uh, when students are just looking around um, and also a great reference point. So, you know, in the morning, I know I get scams quite frequently, bring it up in conversation with the students and talk about how you detected the scam. Fingers crossed you headed it off without clicking on any dodgy links. Um, so again, we provide an example here of an email in an inbox and we highlight some of these red flags in action. So that's another activity or you know, artifact that you can download and use with your students. So the key learning outcome with both the online and the offline component of these activities is knowing how to identify a scam reduces the likelihood that you'll have your information or identity stolen. Um, some of the other activities in the series of cybersecurity resources we have talk about sharing information and privacy and introduce students to the idea that they need to keep their information private. Um, this activity talks about how people might try and steal that data or private information and students learn that if they can spot a scam, there's a less chance of that information being taken. The red flags are a really easy guide for students. In terms of an online activity, you'll see that these mirror the offline activity and it's up to you which components you use depending on ac um, access to resources and so forth. These activities are more interactive in the online course. So in this case, we have an email in the inbox, which is from top 10 T. And we ask the students to think about which techniques have been used in the activity. Um, I'm going to jump across into the live version now. Apologies. And here's my email inbox and I can open up the top 10 T email. Um, I can already see, click here to win the prize. And when I get onto this website, it's asking me to provide a lot of personal information. Um, I can see some pretty bad looking layout there. And I can also see from the original email, something too good to be true, the subject line, you're a winner. It's not something I'm expecting. I probably haven't been to top 10 T recently. Um, there's a bit of urgency here. Gulp, don't sip. You click straight away or your prize is gone forever. So here you can see an example of um, a scam email in action. And students can select the tick boxes here to identify which of the red flags are in action. Uh, another problem we provide the students with is an inbox with a series of text messages. 
And their job is to go through, read them all, and then from the tick down, choose whether the messages are scams or not scams. So again, giving them real relevant feeling examples that look a lot like the messages that might arrive on a student's phone or other device. Um, here's an example of an unpaid postage scam, which has been quite prevalent in 2021 as we've all been shopping up a storm online. Mixed in with some non-spam messages. And we've included things like, you know, a blood donation one, which potentially students might think is unsolicited or scammy, but it's not asking to provide any personal information. There's no offer there, nothing that seems too good to be true. So we give some relevant examples for students. Um, the other activity in here, we use an annotation tool. So going back into the inbox, uh, we have an email here now from JB Hi-Fi. It looks like it might be JB Hi-Fi. On closer inspection, we can see that the email address is actually from sales at jbh1f1.com. So that's clearly a, a sign when we look at the email address that it's not who we thought it was from. And in this case, students can actually come in and line by line, they can highlight things that look like a red flag. And we keep coming back to this idea about red flags to reinforce things to watch out for. We can see there's a strange looking link here that doesn't seem quite right. Um, there's some time pressure. Your account will be charged with $1,300 within 12 hours. So students can come and explore by annotating. Again, if they click through on this link, and we would always encourage students not to click links if they're not sure what they are, um, they're taken to a website that's asking them to provide personal information and implement some of this dodgy design we talk about with spelling mistakes. Uh, and so it's worth reiterating with students again what the learning outcomes are here. Just jump across. Apologies, my screen's playing up on me briefly. So these are the examples that we've looked at. Learning outcomes uh, with the online activities in addition to what we looked at before. Um, you can receive scams by multiple avenues. Uh, you can receive them by email, text, even things like voice messages can have scams inside them. Um, be wary of offers and threats online, especially if they are unsolicited. I'd actually add to the list of outcomes there what to do if you receive a scam. And that would be don't click, don't follow through. It's not fun to interact with scammers. I think um, in the past people used to do that a little bit. Don't respond and speak to a trusted adult if you have concerns about anything. For high school students, we introduce them to the idea of being able to report scams. Um, but for primary students, I'd recommend that speaking to a trusted adult is the way to go if they receive a scam message. So that's the end of the scams activities that we provide. Um, it's a nice straightforward set of activities, which, as I mentioned, you can use online, offline, whatever suits your needs. In terms of further support for the activities, um, I've mentioned in other videos in this series, the Unpacking the Curriculum website is a great place to check back in and explore which of the key concepts might be relevant for teaching cybersecurity. And in another one of our videos, we've walked through where we see it fitting into the curriculum. Um, and this website will be updated in 2022 as the new curriculum rolls out to reflect some additional linkages and references to cybersecurity that we expect to see in the curriculum following an extensive consultation in 2021. Um, the activities I've shown you today are part of our whole suite of cybersecurity challenges. Um, we have a, a dedicated challenge about phishing and scams, which is well worth checking out, um, as well as a few of the short problems that you just saw, which are in a course available online called Cyber Marvel. You've seen one of the posters in action. Uh, all of our posters are accessible free from our website in high res images if you'd like to print any of them out and have them up in the classroom as reminders. Um, and all of the activities that we have, the online challenges have supporting teacher notes and solutions for you so that you can have a look through ahead of time um, and understand what's coming up for the students. Uh, as well as that, there are lesson plans available for the activities we've talked about. And as I mentioned, all the links will be available at the end of this presentation. 
Uh, one thing also worth mentioning is that twice a year we run Brock Cyber Comp, which is a timed 45 minute activity free for students where they'll complete 12 problems that cover all sorts of cyber security activities and um, topics, including scams and watching out for those red flags. So I'd really encourage your students to jump into that one. Um, they complete the 12 problems in the set time period and then uh, about around a week later, the results are published and they can check how they went. And as a teacher, you can look across the whole cohort of students in your group and see how they've gone. Um, and the answers are grouped by themes. So you can see, oh, our students are great at spotting scams, um, but not very familiar yet with what a strong password looks like. And then you can pick up some of the activities and use them as you wish. Um, just a screenshot here of some of the range of activities available on our website. And that brings us to an end. So thank you for uh, joining me in this webinar. Uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm Nicola O'Brien. We're very grateful to Google to provide the funding to make these videos happen. Um, and if you have any questions, please just drop us an email, help at brockacademy.org. Uh, if you're online, jump into either Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. You'll find us at all of those places on Brock Academy handles and you can keep up to date with what we're doing. Thanks again, and please get in touch and let us know how you go with teaching cybersecurity in your classroom. Thank you.